क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन से कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दी अर्थ नाउ द अर्थ इज मेड अप ऑफ मेनी लेयर्स फर्स्ट वी हैव द कॉन्टिनेंटल क्रस्ट देन वी हैव दी ओशियानिक क्रस्ट देन वी हैव अपर मैंटल देन वी हैव लोअर मैंटल देन वी हैव आउटर कोर एंड देन वी हैव इनर कोर एंड देन वी हैव इनर कोर so the first statement says the oceanic crust is thicker than the continental crust and is made up of denser rocks there are two things one it is talk uh, one it is talking about the thickness of oceanic crust and then it is talking about the density of the oceanic crust now if you look at the classification and in the previous question itself we discussed that density increases towards the center or i could say that as you move from the center towards the surface density reduces meaning what the outer core sorry uh, the oceanic crust is more denser than your uh, continental crust the oceanic crust made up of basalt is more denser when compared to your continental crust so this is correct but the oceanic crust is much thinner and not thicker than the continental crust your oceanic crust is only about 5 to 10 kilometers thick whereas your continental crust can be 35 to 40 kilometers thick therefore continental crust is thick and not oceanic crust it is incorrect statement 2 continental crust is recent in origin than oceanic crust no continental sorry oceanic crust is recent in origin when compared to continental crust so uh, when discussing your sea floor spreading theory you would have studied that along you uh, along the atlantic ocean for example you have something known as the mid atlantic ridge where you have formation of oceanic crust you don't have similar formation of continental crust so you have you still even today you have continuous formation of oceanic crust you have new you have formation of oceanic crust and the destruction of older uh oceanic crust due to subduction uh, into the uh, mantle therefore oceanic crust is recent in origin when compared to continental crust so this is also incorrect choose the correct statements neither one or two neither one or two. 12th question with reference to tsunamis consider the following statements the first statement says tsunamis are only generated by undersea earthquakes and volcanic eruptions no tsunami may be generated by anthropogenic activity uh, along the mediterranean sea in france i think about in during the 1980s construction of an uh, uh, air strip or an airport very close to the uh, sea resulted in uh, uh, an underwater landslide which resulted in tsunami okay similarly ex explosion of uh, nuclear weapons may may i am saying there is possibility that it may result in tsunami waves uh, underwater landslides may also result in tsunami uh, what do you say uh, a meteorite or oh, sorry uh, a meteor shower or an asteroid which survives its journey through the atmosphere and plunges into the oceans may also result in tsunami waves so not restricted only to earthquakes or volcanic eruptions this is incorrect second statement as it approaches its velocity increases now when it comes to tsunami please remember always if this is the surface and this is ocean out there in the open ocean tsunami waves will always have very long wavelength in open oceans away from the surface it will always have long very long wavelength of say about more uh, about 500 kilometers for example it will have high velocity very high velocity about 500 to 800 kilometers per hour but very low amplitude but very low amplitude but when the same tsunami waves approaches the surface what happens the depth reduces there is shallow water so when the tsunami waves reaches shallow waters what will happen is that the long wavelength reduces amplitude 
increases and the velocity also reduces since the amount of water reduces now due to friction along the surface <coughs> sorry Uh, due to friction along the surface, the velocity reduces. The velocity reduces. Hence, wavelength also reduces. But amplitude increases. Therefore, when the tsunami waves approaches land, it has uh, a great height. Tsunami waves will have a great height of about 3 to 4 or even 10 feet stories in height. Please remember, when it reaches the surface, short wavelength, low velocity, high amplitude. Okay, so velocity decreases and not increases. This is also incorrect. Choose the correct statements, neither one nor two. It is option D. Okay, thirteenth okay. question. Consider the following statements with respect to volcanoes. The first statement says volcanoes of central eruption type are the most explosive, and the lava non viscous, unlike fissure type volcanoes. This is obviously true. You have two types, fissure type volcanoes or central eruption type volcanoes. You have central eruption type volcanoes like Stromboli, uh, Vesuvian or uh, Palin uh, volcanic eruptions where the lava is very, very viscous and hence it is not able to flow out easily. And this results in explosive volcanic eruptions when compared to your fissure type volcanic eruptions where the lava is more fluid and is able to flow. So first statement is correct. Second statement says, volcanoes are usually seen in plate boundaries and not within plates. Now, this statement is true. Yes, most or majority of the volcanoes are only seen along plate boundaries, but you also have volcanoes in the middle of continents, for example, or in the middle of your continental plates. Okay, so you have something known as hotspot volcano, known as hotspot well, uh, volcano, such as your Hawaiian Islands, Hawaiian volcanic islands, Reunion Island, they are all nothing but hotspot volcanic eruptions. So, not always, but yes, volcanic eruptions are uh, mostly seen along plate boundaries and not within plates, but you may also have within plates. Therefore, it is correct. Third, Calderas are deep depressions. No. Calderas are not deep depressions. Rather, calderas are large craters. Calderas are not deep depressions that are formed during the evacuation of a magma chamber. Rather, calderas are large craters. So what happens? This is a volcanic eruption which is taking place. Okay, this is a volcanic eruption which is taking place. Now, what happens if the lava is very viscous? It may solidify along the vent. It may solidify along the vent and therefore it will plug the opening. When it plugs the opening, what will happen? A tremendous amount of pressure is built from within and finally the entire thing will explode. The entire thing will explode and collapse, leaving behind a large crater leaving behind a large crater over a period of time it may be filled with water it may be filled with water to form something known as a caldera lake to form something known as a caldera lake okay so this is correct this is correct this is incorrect uh, this is correct this is also correct. This is incorrect. So the correct answer is B, 1 and 2. The correct answer is B, 1 and 2. Next question, question number 14. Which of the following can cause an earthquake? And uh, can a volcanic explosion result in an earthquake? Yes. A volcanic explosion can result in an earthquake. This is possible. Active fault zones, of course. This is where you have maximum earthquakes along fault lines. Tsunami waves? No. Tsunami waves is an effect of earthquake, not a cause. The question is asking for cause. Tsunami waves, they are an effect of earthquake and not cause of an earthquake. Mining? Of course, mining may result in 
earthquakes. Uh, for example, your uh, polar uh, gold mines, they have mined the area so, uh, so much that it has destabilized the region and you may sense tremors. So very deep mining may destabilize the region, resulting in human-induced earthquakes. Finally, construction of dams and reservoirs. This is once again true. This is known as reservoir-induced earthquakes. For example, your Koina Dam in Maharashtra across Koina River. That particular region in Maharashtra was absolutely not prone to earthquakes. It was not a seismically active region. But after the construction of the Koina Dam, the, uh, the weight or mass of the water has destabilized the crust beneath it, making the Koina Dam region prone to earthquakes. So reservoir induced earthquakes also results in earthquakes. Not tsunami waves, just 1, 2, 4 and 5. 1, 2, 4 and 5. Therefore, the correct option is option B. Match the following. Now, this is a purely a factual question. We have different layers of earth. We have We have continental crust, then we have oceanic crust, sorry. Huh. We have continental crust first, uh, first, then we have oceanic crust, then we have upper mantle, then we have lower mantle, outer core and inner core. The boundary lines between these various layers are said to be discontinuities. Where the discontinuity between continental and oceanic crust is known as uh, Conrad discontinuity, then between outer crust and upper mantle is Morovicic, then between upper mantle and lower mantle is Repeti, between lower mantle and outer core is Guttenberg, and between outer core and inner core is uh, Lehman. Okay, you can remember it like this, CMR group limited. So you have CMR group institutions in Bangalore, for example, so you may, re uh, you may remember it as CMR group limited. So what happens here, Morovicic is what, Morovicic is between crust and mantle or outer core and mantle. So Morovicic is between uh, crust and mantle, huh, here. So one is B, between lower crust and upper mantle, one is B, so this is wrong. Layman, Layman is between outer core and inner core, Layman is between outer core and inner core, so 2C, so it has to be C, correct? You don't even have to consider 3 and 4. But let's, let's just check. Repeti. Repeti is between upper mantle and lower mantle. Upper mantle and lower mantle. So 3D. Yes, 3D is correct. 4A, Guttenberg. Guttenberg is between mantle and core. Mantle and core. Therefore, correct option is option C. Question. Next question. Consider the following statements. The first statement says, Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain is one of the best examples of hotspot volcanism. Now, in one of the previous questions, I had given you the example of Hawaiian Islands as an example of hotspot uh, volcano, uh, volcanic eruptions. So, obviously, this statement is true. This statement is true. The second statement says Mauna Kea, a dormant volcanic uh, volcano on the island of Hawaii, is the highest mountain of the world when measured from its base. Now, if someone asks you which is the tallest mountain on earth, obviously everybody is going to say Mount Everest or Sagarmatha. But if you consider mountains which are present, which are submerged below the sea, then it is actually Mauna Kea, which is actually the tallest mountain on earth. Uh, Mount Everest is the tallest mountain when considering those mountains which are present above the surface of the sea. Now, this particular mountain that is Mauna Kea is submerged underwater. Only the tip of the mountain extends beyond the surface forming an island. But this particular mountain is the tallest if you measure its height from the base of the mountain. So, this is correct. The third statement says, Hawaiian type of volcano erupt quietly due to less viscous lavas in what is locally known as Pele's hair. I have told you. Once again, Hawaiian type of volcanoes, it is nothing but uh, fluidic volcanic eruptions, which will not form uh, very tall mountain ranges, but may rather form a shield. Therefore, this is also correct. 
one, two, and three. All of them are correct. Choose the correct statement from the ones given below. All three are correct. Consider the following statements and choose the correct options. The first statement says the difference between hot springs and geyser is that there is intermittent spouting of hot water from the former while there is continuous spouting of water from the latter. Now there is a difference between a geyser and a spring. The, the difference is that for example consider this land surface okay so you have a hill or a mountain and then you have flat surface okay so this is an elevated region and this is a surface a lower surface now where do you have a spring where do you have a spring or this intermittent sorry where do you have these hot springs you have springs where the water table meets the surface say for example you have heavy rainfall on this hilly region and water seeps through the mountain and you have collection of water beneath the surface so what happens over a period of time water collection increases and the water table rises and when this water table meets the surface this is where you have spring this is where you have continuous spouting of water therefore spouting of water is not in geyser but rather it is in hot springs it is in hot springs then what is a geyser geyser is when you have water reservoirs very close to the magma chamber deep inside the earth therefore this magma chamber will heat up this trapped water and convert it into steam or very hot water this steam tries to rise up to the surface under tremendous pressure and erupts you know just imagine a volcanic eruption but instead of volcano you have eruption of hot steam and water this is known as a geyser this is known as a geyser now the eruption of hot steam and water through a geyser is not continuous unlike a spring therefore continuous spouting of water is in spring whereas intermittent spouting is in a geyser is in a geyser so uh, second statement which says old faithful geyser of the yellowstone national park is considered to be one of the reliable geyser is true because every 60 to 90 minutes you may google or go to youtube and just see a video on this if you like every 60 to 90 minutes there is an eruption of steam and water it is one of the most famous uh, geysers on earth this is in usa the yellowstone national park old faithful geyser is in usa third fumaroles are the last signs of active volcanoes yes fumaroles are the last signs of active volcanoes when the volcanic eruption is dying this is when you see fumaroles where they emit gases and water vapor where they emit both gases and water vapor so not water sorry not water it emits gases and water vapor see here it is very easy for us to go wrong even i misread it now i was like both gases and water correct no it only emits uh, uh, gives out gases and water vapor not water therefore this is not correct this is not correct this is also first statement is also not correct so choose the correct statement from the ones given below only option two that is sorry uh, two only that is option c so option c is a correct answer consider the following statements a super moon is the coincidence of a full moon or a new moon with the closest approach the moon makes to the earth on its elliptical orbit now if you take earth's orbit around the sun or the moon's orbit around the earth it is an elliptical orbit and not a perfect circle so it's as if uh, the earth is present along the focus of a major axis okay so let's let this be the moon's orbit okay then earth is somewhere here it is not perfectly at the center it's not perfectly at the center it's as if it is somewhere uh, uh, close to the focus along the major axis so what happens when the moon approaches this position for example over here it is closest to the earth it is closest to the earth this is said to be perigee this is said to be perigee p e r i g e e when the moon is farthest from the earth it is known as apogee 
A P O G E E. It is said to be apogee. So when the moon is here at perigee, and it coincides with a full moon and a new moon, and it coincides with a full moon and a new moon, it is said to be a super moon. It is said to be a super moon. When the moon is closest to the earth at perigee, and it is also a full moon and a new moon, it is said to be a super moon. Second statement: Spring tides. Spring tides means high tides. Accompany super moon. Of course it does. Of course it does. So spring tides accompany super moon. Yes, you may you have high tides, very high tides when you have a super moon. Why? Because the moon is closest to the earth and hence gravitational pull is stronger. See, always remember, gravity is directly proportional to mass. or weight of the body mass more massive the body more is the gravitational pull but gravity is inversely proportional to distance more the distance lesser is the gravitational pull so statement 2 is correct third blue moon now blue moon is a phenomena which rarely occurs you would have heard of this term right sorry a phrase uh, occasionally people use this phrase once in a blue moon it means something which occurs very rarely so what is a blue moon blue moon is when you have a second full moon in the same month normally what does it happen see the lunar cycle is about 29 days whereas the solar cycle uh, uh, has a month of about 30 or 31 days whereas in a lunar calendar for example every uh, month is about 29 days in length so what happens generally every month Uh, along this uh, your uh, solar calendar every month you only have one full moon but there may there may be a month where you get two full moons so the second full moon in that month is said to be a blue moon so blue moon occurs while other colors in the spectrum no it is absolutely wrong so third statement is wrong whereas the first and the second statement are correct which of the following are correct one and two only one and two only 19 which of the following pairs represent confluence of warm and cold oceanic currents now this is purely factual there are many oceanic currents you should know the distribution the movement uh, of these oceanic currents in which part of the ocean it is very important with respect to prelims as well as your mains it is very very important okay see this is one more advantage of solving uh, question papers is that you understand what type of questions are asked and based on that you focus on what is necessary because knowing what not to read is more important than what to read so when you solve question papers you understand what type of questions come and hence your brain starts to focus your mind starts to focus on those things which are necessary from exam point of view because that is what is necessary you're not uh, nobody is testing you for your knowledge you only have to score more than others okay so uh, which of the following pairs represent the confluence of warm and cold oceanic currents labrador current and gulf stream now labrador current is a cold current of course labrador current is where between north america and greenland between north america and greenland so if you take uh, north america and this is greenland what do you have here you have the gulf stream you have the gulf stream which is warm whereas here you have the labrador current which is cold and both of them meet so this is correct this is warm how about the second statement kuroshio current and oashio current this is along asia in the pacific ocean this is in the atlantic ocean but Kuroshio current and Oashio current is in the Pacific Ocean on the eastern side of Asia. When you have the North uh, Equatorial current along the Pacific Ocean, which is deflected northwards, it moves up as the warm Kuroshio current. It then meets with the cold Oashio current, which is coming in along Japan. So this is also true. This is also true. How about option C? Gulf Stream warm. north atlantic current no gulf stream gives rise to north atlantic current it is not the confluence of a warm and
called current. Therefore, both A and B are correct. Both A and B are correct. Now, here uh, candidates once again tend to make mistakes. What is a the mistake? They will see the first option. They will see Labrador and Gulf Stream. They know Labrador is cold. Gulf Stream is warm. Both of them meet. They would immediately tick this and move on to the next question. But you have to go through the remaining questions. What is option D? Option D is both A and B. You've never checked for option B. Therefore, please go through all the options independently. Do not arrive at a decision hastily. Question 20 says, which of the following evidence supports continental drift theory proposed by Alfred Wegener? Okay, so Alfred Wegener gave many different evidences to prove his concept of continental drift. So one option is what the jigsaw puzzle one. So Australia fits into Asia and Africa. Similarly, the jigsaw fit of South American and uh, African coastlines. So this is Africa. This is Africa. And this is South America. So you can see that South America fits here into Africa. So this is correct jigsaw fit of South American and African coastlines. Second, the occurrence of rich placer deposits of gold in the Ghana coast despite the absence of source rocks. So, Ghana is here. Ghana is here. Ghana is also known as Gold Coast. One of its uh, uh, earlier Ghana was also known as Gold Coast. Why? Because you have a lot of gold deposits in Ghana. But where did this gold come from? This gold was deposited over there uh, through precipitation and deposition by rivers. But where did this gold come from? The gold came from this region over here in South America. That precipitation or gold veins are found here. The gold veins are found here where the gold deposits are found here. So what does it indicate? Precipitation took place, gold deposition took place over here and then it got separated. So option two is correct. Question three says distribution of identical fossils across oceans. Of course, uh, this is one of the most important ways he actually proved that uh, continents were once together because he discovered fossils in South America and Africa which were not able to swim, which were not able to fly. And how is it that there were fossils of the same animal here in Africa and here in South America. The only explanation was that South America and Africa was together and they separated later and these animals went extinct later. Okay, or it went extinct and then the continents separated later. So this is also correct. So which of the following evidences supports continental drift theory by Alfred Wegener? All three, one, two and three.